Anything is possible. New freezer, it's a lot of them. How you doing, Alex? Uh, doing good. Still on the road, still traveling. So I'm right back where uh, you left me, just with a longer beard. Um, <laughs> in the car, just on the road, visiting stores in Florida. Well, I'm glad we could get you in your element. Uh, just to kick off, uh, guys, this is episode 12 uh, with the very impressive founder and CEO, Alex Bayer of Genius Juice, um, one of my favorite CPG brands, incredible beverage company, and uh, really excited to have you on today. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me join, man. It means a lot. Of course, of course. Well, it's exciting because your episode just reared on Shark Tank. So we'll have to make sure to bring that up. We'd love to hear about the experience sitting with the sharks. But let's let's just start off in the early days of, you know, where you were professionally and how you really transitioned towards uh, the exciting world of consumer packaged goods. Uh, well, um, you know, without going into it into, into too much detail, I started in uh, insurance. So right out of college, I joined uh, Aflac. Uh, I really didn't know where else to go. That's usually what happens when you go to insurance. You have nowhere else to go. And uh, so I started selling, slinging accident plans, um, heart attack stroke plans, cancer plans, uh, great, great products. Aflac is an amazing company, and I really believe in the product, and I, that's why I was selling it. And I just went door to door, knocking on doors, selling it to companies, business to business. And uh, I did that for about seven years. And I think what I really learned was like, I was very introverted in college, um, pretty much the last person to get a girlfriend, you know? And so like, I just didn't really come out of my shell until I got that sales job until I started knocking on doors and it kind of forced me to go out and to meet people and see people. And the motivation was to get more business and to get and connect with more people. And I really found that I enjoyed connecting with people. I enjoyed talking with people. I sat down with probably, I'm, I'm guessing, over 10,000 people in my seven-year career with Aflac. And I just got to really hear personal stories and connect emotionally with people. And that was something that was really missing from what I had before, right? I never really got that level of connection. So I did that for seven years. <clears throat> and then from there, I ran a nonprofit company, which um, lasted about a year and a half. Um, I departed from that for two word, two word reason, nonprofit. And, then, <laughs> and uh, it was, it was really rewarding though. I built a great team and we had probably 60, 70 volunteers and we had galas raising money for children's hospitals. And it was pretty incredible experience, you know, and, and it, you know, taught me a lot about building teams and all that. And then from there I, uh, stumbled into, and usually that's how it works, right? You stumble into it, the CPG arena. And food and beverage. Um, so any experience, any experience prior with beverage or was it really just pure passion? Something kind of, you know, hit the desk and, and some ideas, you know, came to light. Just really pure passion. Um, I always have had, I've always led a very, very healthy lifestyle. Um, uh, every morning, actually, before I went out to sell insurance policies, I would make a smoothie for myself. And I wanted a clean organic plant-based smoothie and you know, I was a vegetarian still am a vegetarian and so I fell in, I fell in love with the concept of a of a on-the-go smoothie that gives you energy it's sustaining and it's also very light so it keeps you going and so from there that's what kind of led me to creating genius juice and I I the the kind of the aha moment was I was at a friend's house they made dessert for me they made me a whole coconut smoothie drink and I'm like what is what the frick's whole coconut I've only had coconut water and they're like oh we blend the entire coconut we we take out the meat take out the water blend it and I drank it and I'm like this is really genius like this concept of whole coconut and that's how it was created and that was 2014 and um, you know the rest is history that's when genius juice started and so sorry this was 2015 you said 2014. 2014. And this is kind of when Zico, Va, Vita Coco, some of the other big coconut water brands are really starting to take off, correct? Yeah, Zico sold to Coke around 2013. So they kind of hit their their peak. And then Vita Coco is still growing even to today. Um, but I think like with our product, even though we're in the coconut segment, we're really more than that. You know, we're more than just a coconut drink. 
Right. We're really repositioning it as a plant-based organic smoothie that has whole coconut as the base. Can you talk a little bit about what whole, the coconut that isn't in those coconut waters, like the nutrient, the nutrients and the benefits associated with a whole coconut smoothie versus just the coconut water? Yeah, yeah, great question. Yeah, so as everyone knows, most people know, coconut water has like, it's a kind of a, a replacement to Gatorade. It's like a sports drink. So it has electrolytes and potassium. Where Genius Juice comes in is because we use the meat of the coconut, it's hitting on a lot of amazing trends like MCTs, good fats, protein, fiber. So it functions more as a meal replacement uh, versus just a coconut water. And I think the way that we like to term it to customers is like coconut water is missing half of what's from nature, right? Yep. It's missing half of the coconut. We didn't leave anything out. Well, we left the shell out, but I don't think we want people to be drinking that. So, yeah. so my, my guess, and this is, you know, probably the reality of the situation is that turning a coconut, you know, an entire whole coconut and optimizing a supply chain to scale it into a smoothie is probably not the easiest, uh, you know, journey or process to perfect. So you have this great idea. How do you go about commercializing a very challenging and probably non-existent manufacturing process? Well, that was kind of the, uh, the pro and con of the entire journey is like, the good thing is that no one else is doing it. The bad thing is that no one else is doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the best that? breakthrough products, by the way. Like the hard totally. way is, obvi is always the best way. So, you know, I mean, uh, if it was easy, everyone would do it, right? So, yep. um, so you know, uh, when we came out, there was really nothing like this on the market. Still really nothing exactly like it. A lot of people are trying to copy it or try to put other ingredients in, but no one's really using whole coconut to the degree that we are. Um, so we had to find a vertically integrated supply chain land that, that had a direct tie to the source of coconuts. And not only that, we had to find someone that could get the meat in the water and, and do it in a safe way, right, in a sustainable way, and also source yep. enough of it to scale with us as we grew. So a long story short, I, I'm, I'm making this sound like it took like, you know, three days. This took like probably three or four years to actually perfect. We had to get the right supply chain, and then we had to find a place, a co-packer, to pack this product. And it's a very, you know, it's a very specialized product, right? Like yours, right? It's not like you're just throwing a bunch of things together and putting it on a stick, right? Yep. Like it's, it's custom. It's custom made. It's amazing. The texture is awesome. You know, everything's great about your product. It's not easy to make when it's that specialized. So nope. it took a long time, I'm sure as it did for you, to get it exactly where you wanted it, right? From a taste standpoint, texture, look, marketing. So um, that's what, that was the big challenge with our product. But we finally, you know, figured out the Rubik's Cube and um, it makes it really hard for anyone else to try to come in to copy the product, which is a good thing. Once you figure it out, it's hard to copy. Yep, defensibility is everything. And that's really the IP and the beauty of the product that you've created. I mean, I will say just for you guys, it really is such a great in-between uh, beverage for meals, for workouts, et cetera. And I love just how clean the ingredient stack is. You don't feel like there's a whole bunch of junk in there um, that, that really kind of dilutes the, uh, the purity of the product. So. You know, what I think is really special about what you've done, and, and I'd love to hear a little bit about this. So you had this great idea. Can you talk a little bit about actually going uh, to the source and finding the, I believe it's a specific type of green coconut and, and, and that process? Because that's pretty unique to actually go out there, get your hands dirty and, and find that, uh, you know, that source. Yeah, literally getting my hands in the soil, like dirty. Yep, yep. So, uh, yeah, so um, it all started with finding the right supply partner, you know. And we found someone that was, uh, you know, they're U.S. based, and then they also own a facility in, Thai in Thailand. But I really wanted to go out there and just see for myself, you know, meet the farmers, meet the partners. Like I didn't, I don't speak Thai. I probably yeah. should. <laughs> uh, but I uh, there was translators there, and I got to see exactly how they source the coconuts, how they bring them in from the groves, how they bring them through, how they cut them open, how they extract, and it's a really like 
rewarding, beautiful process. Like when you get to like, like see exactly how it's made from A to Z all the way to the bottle from, I would call it from palm to palm. Yep. From the palm of the tree to the palm of your hand. I love that. And so, yeah. And so like, you know, I went out there really above everything else just to do due diligence to make sure like they were who they say they were, they were doing it the way they said they were doing it. It was as clean as they said they were, how clean it was. And it really checked all the boxes off. Like when I went out there and I was incredibly impressed with their operations and that's what kind of led to us forming a long-term relationship with them. Awesome. Awesome. And so it seems, you know, it seems like you had really a, a, a beta product ready for market you have sourced it, you found a way to commercialize it. So how do you, where do you start? Um, you know, where were you effectively, wh who was the first grocery store that you launched it into? And, you know, what was the initial reaction from consumers? Yeah, I mean, it's, what's, what's really funny is that we, yeah, diligence is key. I'm, I'm reading some of the, uh, the uh, comments Love that. Here. So some, by the way, just quick side tab. Someone asked, I can't find you in Whole Foods. Can I do a quick plug? <laughs> Dude, please. This is all, this very, is your very, platform. Go very quick. Okay, good. I have free reign. I love that. I better yes. you know, be careful what you wish for, but, um, <laughs> so we're in whole foods, uh, SoCal or SOPAC, which is Arizona, Nevada, and SoCal, NorCal, Rockies and Northeast. Um, so if you're in those whole foods, you're in luck. If you're not in those whole foods, you're out of luck, but you can always order it online. So there you go, geniusjuice.com. Okay. There's Steven. Steven said, yes, ha ha, we got you, Steven. <laughs> there you go, there you go. So uh, anyway, going back to your question, uh, sorry to hijack. You no, know, please, podcast. no, all good. Um, so I think we really, when we first came out, we had, like, as you probably have found out, you release a lot of different flavors and innovations and you really figure out what works best, right? Like it, it takes a while to get to, in the dream pop world, you know, the, the matcha latte one or the chocolate one, like, or the strawberry, <clears throat> you know, so we had to find our best sellers that we wanted to go forward with and, and push into the stores. Definitely. So we, so we had, believe it or not, <clears throat> we had 14 SKUs when we started, wow. we had seven flavors. We had kale, carrot, all whole coconut based. We had kale, carrot, um, which were my least favorite. I, I, I didn't even like them. And I came out with them. Uh, we had berry, <laughs> we had cacao, we had um, a coconut water. And then as a last minute addition, like we were formulating everything in like in our kitchen. And like, we were, th we're thinking like, maybe we should do the just coconut. Maybe, you know, we were like, <laughs> should we, should we not? Because do people really want like pure coconut or do they want like a flavor to it, right? We were thinking like too much into it. We're overthinking it. Like people want flavors, right? And so the original was originally not even part of our offering. Um, and the original is now 65% of our sales. Top, I was going to so, say top seller. <laughs> top seller, be, like top dog, man. So it kind of gets wow. kind of like you, you hear these stories where like an artist has a last minute song that they throw on the record and ends up being, you know, their you know, their whatever, beat it, like their Michael Jackson, like number one hit. Yep. And so like, yeah, so that was it. We came out with seven in two different sizes. We realized quickly that most of the flavors were not doing well and people really wanted the original, like to our surprise. So uh, we decided to cut all the skews except the original and the coconut water. So we went from 14 down to two. <laughs> there you go. And, and we saw this really amazing overall that year versus last year with only two flavors. So it's really quality over quantity, as cliched as that sounds. So, no, I mean, look, I think you get analysis paralysis. Uh, I've fallen victim to the same thing, wanting to launch new SKUs and new SKUs, but there's an entire supply chain for every single SKU. And so, uh, what I say to other founders I speak to is start off with a couple SKUs and you can test the waters, you can back into what works, but it seems, you know, going from 14 to two is a little more extreme, but obviously that's what you had to learn. And then you guys now have four or three SKUs. Uh, we have three uh, and we are coming out with a fourth. Got it. Yeah. Three is what I remember. Um, so, okay. So talk to me a little bit about once you kind of have made those adjustments, 
you know, I'd love to hear how you started to get some initial scale. And after that, um, you know, want to hear how, how kind of led into Shark Tank. <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, a uh, company launched in 2014. We uh, primarily launched in like natural stores, like many of us do, you know, just we're trying to get the product going. We want to get a lot. It's, a, it's like a litmus test, right? You, you launch it into Air One. That was our first retailer. You know, we love it. You know, Air One's great. And we're still in their stores today, you know, six years later. And we just really found out what worked and what didn't. Then we got into Whole Foods in 2015, 16. And then right around 2018, we decided to make that big jump over to um, conventional. We felt strongly enough that because we dialed in our product, we dialed in the quality. We really thought that this coconut product could be universally appealing to people just beyond natural. Right. So we made it, we made a really big bet. We put in uh, three, uh, two new flavors, the mocha and the turmeric, plus the original into Albertson's Vaughn's pavilions. They were the first major conventional, you know, 400 locations. We put it in. And what we found out was people loved the original, like the mocha still did really good. The original actually outsold almost the entire category. In Albertson's wow. Vons. Like it was outselling Koya, outselling Rebel. We pulled spins data. Like we're just like, we have a major hit on our hands here. Like, you know, it may not do as, you know, the mocha and turmeric don't do as well as the original. But you know what? As long as you have one solid skew, you can build around that, right? You can build around it. So that's how, that's been our strategy ever since. And we've launched now. We're launching in Target next week. We got Congrats. Spotify. Yeah, thank you. Target's a great retailer. I mean, they're really uh, upping their game and going after the, you know, the organic supermarket type of, you know, feel in their stores. And then uh, launching in public, we launched in Publix. You know, we're in Smart and Final. So anyway, leading to the Shark Tank thing. Uh, Can we just stop really quickly? Because going into conventional is always such a very, you know, it's a nerve wracking thing. It's one thing for a product to work in natural. Can you talk a little bit about the experience in, a, in, in Vons and, and within out the Albertsons portfolio? Because even with ourselves, we've built our business primarily in natural and we're starting to make right. the jump into conventional. And I'd like to hear, was it as seamless of a transition? Is it product dependent? Anything you can do to increase the probability of success? Just curious on that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not easy because you really have no idea how it's going to do. And uh, the one thing I learned is, you know, for us, we only have three SKUs, right? If you have five SKUs, I think you have five, right? Yeah. So you want to go in with your top two, top three. That's it. You know, like you don't want to take any big chances. And also a lot of conventional retailers um, require slotting fees or free fills. So you want to kind of lessen that impact. You know, you don't want to pay all thousands of dollars in slotting fees and realize that two of those slots are not working, right? Two of those SKUs are not working. So right. go, with your, go with your top two or three. I, I think the main thing is to what I've really learned personally as like running and running Genius Juice <clears throat> is to support the stores really at the store level. Really important. So I, I had a full-time guy in the first six months when we launched in Albertsons, Vons, and Pavilions, I had one guy that just road warrior went store to store to store to store every single day. He went into the stores. He talked to customers. He talked to store managers. He got secondaries, right? So people could see it in other areas of the store. And I think that was a huge difference maker. Is it's, just so, not it's so powerful. By the way, we got uh, Jorge, who's on, who just said yes. Jorge j just finished a trip for us and he went all over the Southwest, all over the Rocky Mountains every single day doing exactly what you just did. Rockstar, just shout out to Jorge because it's, it's, it's been a game changer for our business too. So anyone else watching, keep going, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, I, I really uh, give a lot of props to Jorge because I know how hard it is to be on the road and go store to store and um, Genius Juice is a good uh, drink when you're on the road, you know, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, so, no, it, yeah. I mean, it's great. <laughs> yeah, no it's, uh, on the go, you know, quick. So, yeah, like we send people out to stores all over Southern California and like coupon tags, whatever you can do to support it at the store level. And I think like you don't have to do it forever, but at least for the first six months, 
because if you have a strategy, which a lot of, you know, a lot of founders do, it's really unfortunate. You can't just put the product on the shelf. Set it and forget it is dead in 2020. It doesn't work do anymore. It. Can't do it. There's too many brands. The category, like the plant-based category, frozen category is enormous. There's so many competitors. So if you want someone to truly understand the difference, you got to get someone in the store to talk with the managers. And on top of that, talk with customers. Like go to the shelf. If someone's like looking at your competitor's product, right? Um, tell them, hey, you know what? That product, not bad, but check this one out. And I, I've been going to Publix's. You know, I decided to take a road trip myself. Um, I kind of pulled a Jorge. And I went to like 200 different Publix locations in the last two weeks. That's and, awesome. And every store, every store, man, like even though it's exhausting, I talk to the store manager. I talk to the produce manager. I give them free bottle coupons so they can try it. And then I also, when I go to the shelf, if someone walks up to the shelf every time, like a, you know, just like a broken record, I tell them, have you tried this? This is a brand new product. It's amazing. It's whole coconut, blah, blah, blah. And if you can get one other thing, like a, a really good nugget to share, if you can get like two or three loyal customers at one store that just goes back to that store over and over again, they will clear the shelf for you every week. So it's not about like trying to get a thousand people to buy it once. Super you fans. One, you have one person to buy it a thousand times and you're set for that store for a long time. Yep. I, as long I as, think as long as, as, as long as it's in stock, that's going to be the big thing. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Look, great advice. And I think I have a ton of admiration for you, Alex, because like I'm, I'm like you and our team is a very, we operate very similarly. You got to roll up your sleeves and get in there and, the, your brand success is going to really mainly occur if you're willing to get in there, introduce people to the product back to even your insurance days. It sounds like, you know, you've talked to tens of thousands of people. What are some new cost? You know, you can win a new customer every single day. Um, so I, I love it, man. I think it's really badass and very impressive. Um, I guess, you know, what I, what I'd love to hear more so about too is, okay, so back to what you're saying, you, you, you Vaughn's within the Albertsons portfolio kind of, help give that real traction. Then, uh, you know, you mentioned you're, you're going to start talking about Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah. So um, we aired on Shark Tank originally in January of 2020. Um, I can go on forever about it, but, uh, you know, I don't want our battery on our phones to run out here. Yep. So, um, <laughs> so I'll keep it short. Yep. Um, so we, uh, we originally aired in January, and then we, uh, we, we taped it in 2019. So it took eight or nine months for it to air. Um, once we did air, it was, I mean, it could go either way, right? If the, if the sharks hate the product, then it's going to hurt you. Luckily for us, you know, just knock on wood, they really love the product. Mark Cuban, he was, I was the one that went on the show and I presented it. And when you, when you watch the episode, you can see Mark Cuban like drinking them. Like every time they cut to Cuban, he was like drinking them. Yeah. So that was, that was pretty cool. And then uh, Mr. Wonderful actually held the bottle up and he's like, this is good stuff. Again, the logo was facing the camera. Yeah. Like, it's great. And then Barbara Corcoran said, um, this, this coconut is so delicious. It's like nothing else. Or she said something like that. So I could have not, I actually wrote a thank you note to all the sharks, like a handwritten note um, for the ones that I could find out where their houses were. And I just really thank them for being so supportive with our brand and product because that made all the difference. And I think the other thing too was I just came across and I, I really just aimed to do this to be myself, like not to try to be someone else, not to try to be overconfident, just really let my own personality shine through. I'm, I'm kind of a little bit weird, a little quirky, I'm very, <laughs> you know, I'm very passionate and that all came through in the episode and uh, for those that haven't watched it it's actually on hulu right now they just put it on hulu a couple days ago and it's also on youtube but on youtube you don't see the whole, ep the whole episode only on hulu you do and we did a song like i love to karaoke so i wrote a song it's the coconut smoothie song and i had three backup dancers we all had wigs on and glasses <laughs> and uh, <laughs> i love it 
And I'm like, dude, like if this doesn't make it on air, I don't know what will. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I really push to make it very entertaining, fun, light, great for American television. But also I wanted to, to be very passionate about the product and really focus on the benefits of the product. And I think that all came through beautifully. You know, we kind of got lightning in the bottle on the show and um, the sales were excellent, you know, after the show aired. So we're very grateful for the opportunity and thank you, uh, ABC, for airing the episode, if you're watching. I love it. Well, congratulations on that. Huge accomplishment and, you know, very nerve wracking. But, you know, anyone check it out on Hulu. Um, I'm going to check it out on Hulu as well. Um, so, so let's, so, okay. Shark Tank aired. Um, and now you guys are really focusing on scaling into target Publix and, and taking this distribution to the next level, I guess, to go a little bit deeper, like Alex, what is your, what do you, what do you hope to accomplish with genius in the next three, five years? Like what's, what's the goal of this beverage, uh, brand and, and, and what do you, where do you see it evolving, um, uh, as, as the years continue? Yeah, I think like, you know, I think it's really just building out our hero product, which is whole coconut. You know, it's really simple. Just, I think there's such a uh, romance and magic around that core ingredient, you know, and we're so good at it and we've learned it and we've mastered it. So I think continuing to double down on the concept of clean, on the concept of organic, on the concept of no additives, no, no junk, you know, really separating ourselves from all the competitors and staying true to our mission to make a healthy, clean drink where less is more. Um, so we do have some innovations in the pipeline where we want to focus on more, I guess without giving anything away, more functionality, more functionality. I think that's where the market is going, right? Yeah. Is what is it doing for me mentally? What is it doing for me physically? What kind of energy is it giving me? And like, how is it protecting my body, right? How is it fortifying me? How is it making me feel better? Um, so I think there's a lot of room, like with a, the with a name genius, a lot of people ask, does it make me smarter, right? And I've heard that probably thousands of times, um, just from trade show, you can only imagine, right? Like, I'm sure you hear something like dream pops, like, well, I dream about it or something. Yes. So like people, you know, I've heard that question so many times. I'm like, maybe, you know, maybe it should have nootropics in there, right? Maybe it should have something where it helps you mentally focus better. And I mean, the coconut meat, the fat from the coconut meat does do that, but something that kind of brings it to a whole other level. So there's a lot of things that we're thinking about on how to build out an innovation pipeline that can better tie in, even tie in even more to the brand and also take up, really create more shelf presence in the stores. So I would say it's hard to, it's hard to see four years out or three years out. I'm kind of a one to two year guy. Yep. Um, I, I definitely know that we want to expand in some more functional uh, products, more functional smoothies that do more for you mentally and physically, and also really focus in on nootropics because I'm a big believer in that. Like if your mind is in the right place and you can focus, so many things go right. You know, you, you, like you're, you excel more, you perform better, you get more done, you're more efficient, more productive. And I'm huge on good fats, you know, in my diet. And that seemed, uh, I'm not losing my mind just yet. <laughs> so it seems to be really helping me in just every day, you know, running my business and being able to think through things more clearly. So what recommendations would you have for up and coming founders who might want to launch a beverage brand? Uh, anything that you would tell yourself five years ago or any tips or pointers on how to maybe skip a few unnecessary steps uh, if, if at all possible? Uh, I mean, I would say just don't go into the business. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm just kidding. Uh, kind of partially kidding. But uh, depends how much pain you like to endure. Exactly. It's masochistic for sure. Um, that could be a good name of a company, like Masochist uh, Juices. Liquid Death should launch a product. Liquid called. Death. <laughs> Liquid Death. <laughs> that guy, I don't know how he got it right, but he got it right. I, I don't know. I don't. I, I, I didn't. I did. I was like, when I first saw it, it was so shocking. I'm like, this has to work because it's so insane, right? Yeah. Yep. Um. So and it did. 
so I think, uh, you know, what I, what, I would, what I would say is make sure you have enough money in the bank to support it. Uh, most entrepreneurs don't realize how much money it takes to build a business with, you know, cash flow, with getting salespeople, marketing, like marketing, right? Just to market the product in the store, like doing a dollar off or two for one or, or not two for one, but like a buy one, get one or whatever it is. Refill, slotting, refills, inventory, you know, <laughs> trade spend, uh, you know, all yeah. the above, man. So it, it, it takes a lot of money to run a food and beverage business. And the less mistakes you can make, the more money you're going to save. So I think you said it earlier really well, uh, David, which is start with limited SKUs. Start with like two or three at the most. Build those out. Make those strong. And then you can come out guns blazing and come out with more flavors and really build your line. But start small. Crawl, walk, run. Have enough money in the bank. You know, try to get some investment money lined up before you start, which is not easy to do because you have no yep. revenue. Yep. Um, and if you can get on Shark Tank, I'm telling you, like it's it's not it's not easy, but if you can go on an audition, like if you can get on, it will propel your business in a big way. So. And that just comes down to exposure again, right? Like the more I think people forget, like even when your brand is hot and like on in LA or New York or by coastal or in a few markets. The U.S. is so massive that just any access to viral exposure is so powerful. Um, I guess, you know, coming, coming towards the close of, of, you know, sharing your story, um, any tips for how, because, look, this is a really challenging endeavor. You're five years in now, correct? I'm in my seventh year. Seventh year. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Seven years in. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm only at four and a half, which still is a long time. Um, it relatively not, but yeah. And congrats what, for making it. I mean, if you make it past two years, you're better than 95%. So <laughs> surviving so, is everything. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, if you could just share, um, how do you keep your mental stability? How do you focus on perseverance? Would you attribute it to your you know, mission, uh, work-life balance, uh, you know, meditation? Like what do you do to really keep going and find that persistence because there are days where man products foils uh you made a huge strategic mistake a funding round doesn't go through an investor pulls a retailer pulls how do you work through the the real financial and uh and emotional challenges that come with this space yeah i mean it's uh there's there's, there's so many things that can pop up and just sideswipe you in this business um I think the main thing is just to stay on mission and stay on point and don't, don't, don't forget or don't get lost as to why you got into the business to begin with as an entrepreneur and why you got into this business, you know, for, I mean, I'm hoping that this is the reason is be, it really comes from a passion for what you're doing and it no comes question. From a, a passion for the product and your heart is in and you're wearing the heart on your sleeve. Obviously there's a lot of side benefits where you can, sell your company for a hundred million and become really rich and, you know, and retire early. But those are all to me kind of fringe benefits. The main where my eyes on like the, is the main prize, which is the company, the product, building a brand, building a great team, helping others, employing others, right. And giving jobs. And I think when you come from that place of wanting to help others and really building a, building a brand, and also a product that can help people. And when you come from that place of authenticity, it really, it seems like everything else kind of follows, right? When you leave the, the heart, people, the people that chase money in, the, in this industry don't last the two years that you mentioned. You really, no. I, I, the most successful people I've seen, Alex, are people who have this broader mission or goal and, or genuinely love the process. And I know it's so trite to say love the process, but like, I've been talking to you, you know, for 38 minutes, whatever. And I just, you, you, like, I can just tell, like, this is what you love to do. And frankly, I love what I do as well. Like the cat, like the money, the upside are great and exciting, whatever. But, but like, even like capital aside, I mean, this is what I would be doing regardless because I genuinely enjoy the process. And I'm a very similar mission to you is just putting healthier products in the hands of more people, inspiring people yeah. and building. Uh, you know, yeah. we get to own, own our destinies every day. So 
very well. I couldn't have said any better myself. Yeah, I mean, it's really at the end of the day, you're you're your own boss. You know, you run the company, you make decisions. I think not having to work in the corporate world also makes a big difference. And uh, yeah, so I think you said it really well. Just inspire others, help others, create a great product. And uh, hopefully at the end of the road, you also uh, become financially successful as a side benefit. So I love it. Well, Alex, any other plugs that you want to share about Genius Juice? This has been an awesome, awesome uh, session. And, and I appreciate you coming on for the second time. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I call it like one and a half. You know, the first one was a half, you know, because of the, uh, but I think this one, yeah, I mean, honestly, like uh, the first session, I was probably running on like two hours of sleep. So uh, I, I'm, I feel a lot better in this session. Um, so I, I, w I think just the main thing, like you mentioned it before, is to do everything you can to take care of yourself. I mean, I'm not going to plug the company or the product because, you know, whoever knows it knows it. Um, I've been plugging it for the entire time anyway. I really want to <laughs> I really want to plug just is uh, just really take care of yourself and 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 like just really focus on your wellness because the more well, I think a lot of people don't realize this until it's too late or you're going through it. The better that you are, the more well you are, the better that you feel, the better that everything's going to be around you. You know, your relationships will be better. You know, if you're married or in a relationship, it's going to be way better because you're going to feel better. And when you feel better, you can give more love and feel more love. And also in your business, you're going to be more present and more connected with people. So the, don't lose sight on getting enough sleep, eating right, taking care of yourself. It's hard when you're traveling. I know like I'm traveling, but I'm doing everything I can to meditate in the morning, take care of myself. And so that I can perform at my best and be really, really um, inspiring and energetic every single day. It's hard to keep it on the entire day, right? It's really, really hard. And, and you're, on, you're on the bottle even, you know, you have to, you're an embodiment of your product. Yeah. <laughs> I have to live it. So, you know, I mean, I have my moments where I, you know, it's hard because the days are long, but as long as you take care of yourself and eat right, at least you'll have the right fuel to keep going. So that's, I guess that's my plug is take care of yourself, be well and be safe. I love it. Alex, congrats on all the growth. This has been amazing. Um, you know, stay safe out there. And I look forward to catching up over some uh, genius smoothies and, and some drink pops. You got it. You got it. All right. Thanks again, David. Thanks for having me on. And Take care, everyone. Talk soon, buddy. Thanks.